Now, there's another issue here that we're going to get to with our next guest, Vivek Ramaswamy. That is, the Fed never talks about strengthening the real value of the dollar, which in the long run is the key to price stability. Using commodity prices as a reference point for a true dollar value, as was done under Paul Volcker and Alan Greenspan and the Ronald Reagan Federal Reserve appointees, Wayne Angel, Manley Johnson and Robert Heller, which gave us price stability throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Today's Fed under Jay Powell never seems to talk about the dollar or its key role in maintaining price stability. But actually, the commodity value of the dollar has been rising for about a year as broad commodity indexes have been declining steadily. Look at that chart. Very important. And by the way, you've got a deeply inverted yield curve. You've got a contracting into money supply. The Fed probably is a lot tighter than the FOMC believes. Stabilizing the dollar and promoting lower spending, lower taxes, minimal regulations, all this would solve the inflation problem without throwing millions of people out of work and without destroying the economy. All those Phillips curve Keynesians on the Fed staff don't understand any of this, and that's really a pity. A supply-side solution with the classical value of king dollar would get us out of this stagflation slump that we've suffered through for the last couple of years. Anyway, that's my quick riff. Anyway, more on this. Let's bring in Vivek Ramaswamy, 2024 candidate, co-founder, a presidential candidate. Sorry, Vivek. Co-founder of Strive Asset Management and author of Nation of Victims. Vivek, I loved reading your commodity dollar piece in the paper. And I bumped into Paul Jago, the editor of the journal editorial page. I bumped into him downstairs. I told him that uh, we were having you on as a guest. And I also said that this is the only show uh, in any TV network that will even talk about the commodity value of the dollar. But anyway, go ahead. Tell us what's on your mind. The vague for president, the vague for Treasury secretary or whatever, Fed chair, whatever you want. Run for president. But uh, but Larry, you said it really well. We need to put the Federal Reserve back in its place, stabilize the U.S. dollar. It's like the equivalent of if the number of minutes in an hour were floating and it was volatile, None of us would show up at meetings on time. You and I wouldn't even be having this conversation on time. Well, it turns out when the dollar is that volatile, you don't have efficient capital allocation in an economy either. And I'm with you in another way, Larry, is that it's almost as though we've abandoned GDP growth in this country, right? We'll talk about tax increases or debate which cuts we need to make, forgetting that growth itself is an option, right? We're growing at one point something percent now. If we're growing at over three plus percent GDP growth, That actually makes our other fiscal problems melt away, unshackle the energy sector, put people back to work, and yes, reform the Federal Reserve to make it, A, not hostile to wage growth. Every time wages grow up, go up, they treat it as a leading indicator of inflation, when in fact wage growth is a trailing indicator of inflation, which means the Fed actually tightens monetary policy into a business cycle decline anyway, triggering crises like they did in 2008 and 2023 now. But even more importantly, You have a Federal Reserve that, if it's just stabilizing the dollar, will actually stimulate GDP growth in the country. So, Larry, I think that we don't need 23,000 employees in the U.S. Federal Reserve to do that. Under my watch, I think we could have a 90 percent headcount reduction in that system, put the (laughs) Fed back in its place, stabilize the dollar. That's what I say. Well, you know, look at there's still a few of us left that one of the reasons that I was so interested to see your editorial uh, You've got some of us, Steve Forbes, myself, Art Laffer, Steve Moore, Paul Jago. There's a few of us left who remember the gold-backed dollar or the commodity-backed dollar. That's the true value of the dollar. You know, not against other crummy currencies, but against commodities. A broad commodity index mm-hmm. is fine. The interesting thing uh, is, Vivek, if you look at the chart, we ran the CRB chart which has about 20 commodities in it. It's a very broad-based commodity index. That's the one I would use. Uh, But you've got a Goldman Sachs uh, commodity index, too. Um, You know, the things come down quite a bit from roughly one year ago. The Fed is actually closer to where they should be, even though they may not even understand it. And the other point I want to make is all these 
Phillips curve, Keynesian economists, right? All they want to do is destroy wages and destroy jobs. I mean, that's that that's I right. guess that's one way of getting rid of inflation, although sometimes even that doesn't get rid of inflation if you keep printing money while you're destroying the economy. So it's this weird thing. You're right. Ninety percent of the staff should go. Just take them right out. Exactly. I mean, part of the problem is when you tell people to show up for a job when they shouldn't have had that job in the first place, they find things to do. That's what happened in the Federal Reserve over the last 25 years. The Phillips curve is a myth. It's based on old British data out of New Zealand, I believe, that doesn't at all apply to the current American economy or the current global economy. And yet that's become the religious fixation. It's almost like a cult in the modern Federal Reserve system. And actually, this isn't a Democrat or Republican issue, or at least it shouldn't be, Larry. Actually, the Federal Reserve is fundamentally hostile to wage growth in this country. Mm. Part of the reason the bottom 99 percent haven't had as much wage growth is because the Federal Reserve is fundamentally hostile to it. So I don't think you can play this game of trying to hit two targets with one arrow, because then you hit neither one. Inflation and unemployment is what I'm referring to, the dual mandate. Forget about that. Go back to stabilizing the dollar. I agree with you. Broad commodity basket. I don't even I'm not even that fixated on which one. Just a fair, broad commodity basket. Mm -hmm. That's how you reform the Federal Reserve. That's an ingredient to GDP growth. And Larry, in this presidential race, I'll tell you, nobody else is talking about this, which is a mystery to me, because this can actually be a uniting issue that leads us to a national economic revival. I'm in this race. I'm the first millennial to ever run for U.S. president as a Republican. But I'm taking some of the old school ideas and bringing them back, because that's actually what I think takes us forward as a country. Well, that's what we need. We need it. Uh, bless you for it. And, you know, in the debates, be sure and speak up on these things. I mean, I would say, you know, low tax rates. Limited government, minimal regulations, and a strong king dollar with a commodity Amen. reference point. The commodity reference point, you know, it's very old-fashioned. You're not saying just gold. Just use the whole commodity basket. It's exactly right, and um, it would promote growth. It's not a coincidence that growth was better 3% plus when we were using uh, gold points. By the way, the Reagan people... Wayne Angel, Manley Johnson, Bob Heller, mm -hmm. that crowd used commodity price. We had 20 years of price stability when they used that. So and the economy was growing, I don't know, three and a half to four percent. So Vivek Ramaswamy, we wish you luck and thank you for your contribution. If I'm in the White House, I'm calling you, Larry. Get ready for that. You said it very well. Anytime. So get ready for that call. All right. Thank buddy. you. Anytime. Bye -bye. All right, folks, coming up. Well, Hunter Biden has